Hi, welcome everyone. Uh, next up, we have a presentation by Tomas Urchka on Fedora infrastructure product, projects. Thanks. Yeah. So, welcome everybody to this talk about the Fedora infrastructure projects. My name is Tomas, and let's start about who, what, why, and how Fedora infrastructure project is. So for who, it's something about me and about the team where I, where I work. I'm part of the community platform engineering team, which is the team that's basically running the infrastructure for CentOS and Fedora. And before that, I'm software engineering grease monkey. I'm around Linux and open source for about 20 years. I'm using Fedora from Fedora Core 1 release, which is a long time ago. And I was working as a breaker of releases, other, in other words, release engineer for Fedora for about 10 releases maybe a little bit less, but I had my hands in a lot of them. And currently, I <laughs> my official position is product owner, but I consider myself more a cat herder because there's not really much of a product in the Fedora infrastructure, but you need to herd a lot of cats in the form of tickets and bugs and stuff that's happening all, all around the project. So what community platform engineering is, I already mentioned that we are basically running all the tooling that you need to run Fedora. Uh, this talk it will be specifically about the part of the CPE team, that's the team which is uh, called Infrastructure and Release Engineering, and that's basically the people who are actually hands on the infrastructure. <clears throat> and I will be talking only about the part of the team that's wor working with Fedora, because we also maintain CentOS infrastructure, but this talk will not focus on CentOS, it will be purely on uh, folks and part of the team that works with Fedora. So what? What do, we, what do we do and what, what, what do we have? So we have a bunch of projects that we host on either on Pagure or on GitHub. Most of them are living on GitHub when we talk about code repositories and project repositories which are applications. They're mostly live on GitHub. Some of them live on our Pagure. You can see that it's around 200 something projects. Some of them are mirrors on, on the GitHub that, that are mirrors from Pagure. And other than services, uh, code repositories, and let's say Ansible and other infrastructure related things, we also uh, maintain ARC investigations, which is basically a way on how to achieve the correct, uh, how to achieve correct results when we implement some changes in Fedora and in CPE and in infrastructure. So it, it's a way for us to investigate the possible solutions that we have for the problem that we have or to formalize the problem and then get and move along with it. So that's in a nutshell what, what we do and what, the, what, what we all maintain. And you may ask yourself like, but okay, but why you need to change things, right? So you have a bunch of repositories that everybody has. Each project has a bunch of repositories. Each project has a bunch of ticket trackers. But why, why do you need to change it? So. This is one of the reasons all of our repositories have, have more than 2,000 tickets opened currently. And that's a huge amount. And as a, as a team which with limited resources, we do have to focus on some issues that are critical, and we do have to somehow make the whole platform work. So our priorities lie, are, are, are scattered through. We need to make sure the services run. We need to make sure that bugs are fixed in the software. We need to make sure that federal releases are going out. And we need to make sure that build systems are building, update systems are updating, and everything is working properly. So what engineers tend to do is that they tend to work on things they like. And engineers like some things and don't like other things. So the result of that is <clears throat> oh, the result of that is that some aspects of our project are kind of, I don't want to say abandoned, but a little bit forgotten because not everybody wants to work on projects that I call duct tape, which are basically duct taping together a bunch of infrastructure to make it work. And let's be honest, that's not necessarily the most interesting part of work for a software engineer, right? So we, we end up with projects that, ha that are really well maintained, really well developed, and really, uh, really well uh, distributed, and then we end up with projects that nobody wants to work on. <laughs> and I think this is the kind of thing that every team has to, has to encounter and somehow solve. So how do we want to solve this issue and what's the new in our approach? So first, we, st we are starting with community discussion. You can see that we have a, a subset or a 
it's called category, subcategory in our project discussions on our, our discussion server, which is uh, dedicated to infrastructure projects. Currently, we are running only one infrastructure project there. That's the ARC investigation I will be talking about two hours from now. And uh, we want to at first start the discussion, see what people think that about the problem that we are trying to solve, get the input from all of you and everybody, each and every, every person who is interested in Fedora and has something to say about the technical or uh, philosophical problems that we are trying to solve. And we are more interested in the technical part, to be honest, <laughs> because we are all, most of us are engineers. So first step is to start the discussions. Then when we have some output from the discussion, next step is to bring it to FESCO and see what FESCO has to say, because FESCO is the main engineering steering body of Fedora. And if we decide we want to do something, we would like to have an approval or at least some feedback from the FESCO body to say, hey guys, this is not a good idea. You don't want to do this. Or on the other hand, yeah, go for it. This is what the project needs. The project needs you to fix this. And one, once we get the, our feedback from FESCO, we will get to the real work. I'm sorry for the gifts not giving, but that was, suppo that was supposed to be real work. And get the feedback. Get the feedback on the work that was done, again, from all of you, users of Fedora, all of you, people who are consuming the, the services that we are running, and see what we, what we did correctly, what we did badly, where we can make some adjustments, what we can, where we can basically, where, when our solutions are fixing the problems and not introducing new ones. Because that's a thing that's happening not only to our team, but to, I think to all engineering teams, right? You fix one bug and then you pops up. And with feedback, with feedback from you and all of the users that are in Fedora, we can, we can fix this sooner. We can have your feedback and we know that it's broken, so we can go and fix it. And that's about how. So when do we want to, wh when will you see this working? So it's happening right now, kind of. <laughs> the reason is that we started the Federal Infrastructure, Federal Infrastructure uh, Projects Initiative kind of at bad timing because we were uh, sunsetting RHEL 7 things. We were sunsetting some services inside the federal infrastructure. So we didn't really get into kick it off properly and have all the processes in place for those two things that we are currently working on, which is the GitForge investigation I mentioned and GitHub to Fed message, which are two relatively important projects for us. Like GitHub to Fed message is the one that's monitoring GitHub projects and allowing us to monitor them from the federal infrastructure and the ARC investigation I will be talking about uh, later on. So, uh, I'm surely but slowly leading to the end of my presentation and I made it in 10 minutes. I hope so it will be longer. So, <laughs> do you have any questions for me about, about this? Like, do you have any feedback for me about this? Do you think this might work or it might not? It was kind of an or organic grow, I would say. I'd say that it, it, it grew organically. Sometimes some projects were necessary at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I need to repeat the question to the mic. So <laughs> the question uh, was, and now I can't word it properly. Can you repeat it, please? Sure. How did we get to have so many? Yeah. Uh, how did we get here and yeah. to 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 see here we're here? How did we? get here, yes. which means well, how did we get into having 200, 200 projects in three different places and uh, having all those. So it was organic growth. We, we got there because we needed tooling to do that, to do this. We, the distribution grows, it evolves, things change. So we add things. But that's the problem. People tend to add things, but not remove them. 
and that's how we got here. <laughs> so do we have any other questions? Yep. So 2,000 tickets, two current activities underway. Is there an opportunity for a community to get more involved in these activities? Yes. That's exactly why I'm doing this talk. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I try to uh, get your attention on the discourse uh, thread or the discourse uh, category uh, for infrastructure projects. Uh, follow it, please. You will see uh, that there wasn't much activity in the past month. As I mentioned, we had a lot of work to do. Oh, repeat the question again. <laughs> I, I'm really bad at this. So uh, the question was, can you, can you again, please? Yeah. What's the opportunity for community to get involved? And that's the reason why I am doing this talk. It's to make publicly, make it publicly known that we do have like the discourse. The discourse topic is probably the best uh, place to start. Currently, it only has uh, one topic in there. The category has only one topic in there. But in the upcoming weeks, we'll be adding new projects that, that we will that we will be going and prioritize the work on. So th this the, we will be adding new projects for the community. Even community members can come up with some projects that they would like us to fix, work, upgrade. And that's the place. Let's start at the discussions and move from there. So that, that's the place for community to get involved. <coughs> yeah. So the question, the question is, the, the question is, or comment is that the getting into a Fedora infrastructure and getting helping us, it's kind of complicated and it can be complex. Do I get it, did I get it right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. I mean, so how you we, we that, currently, uh, in the last seven months, I, I was able to rewrite parts of documentation for release engineering, and I. I plan to do this with cooperation with other team members, like Kevin, for example, here, to do the same thing for infrastructure and have a better documentation. So you will have a clear path for your change or your help, and you will see clearly what needs to be done. Because now, now as you mentioned, it can get complex not only because the work is complex, but because of the processes. And we kind of expect it's our fault as a, as a team and as a Fedora, we expect you to understand our processes. And so first thing will be to, to get the documentation done correctly. And we are working on that. So that, that's the first step. And w once we do that and make it easier for all the contributors to contribute, then we can move on and, and iterate and make things even easier or better. Do we have anything? Yep. No? So there was a comment, I'll just repeat it into the mic. Uh, there was a comment in the room for the previous uh, question and that is like, yeah, some of the projects are easier to contribute to, are simpler to run locally, and some of the projects are really complex and making them running locally and making changes might not be the easiest thing to do. Some stuff that we can get rid of. Oh, is there some stuff that we can get rid of? Yes. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to answer um, politely. Yes, there is, there is some stuff we are just carrying over because of reasons, and those reasons are mostly uh, historical, right? We did something and project evolved, we are carrying it on. 
Nice example of this would be the PDC stuff that we did in recent months. That we just dro dropped one service that we used in federal infrastructure for a while and do don't want to. So to answer your question, yes, there are places we can remove or we can um, make simpler. Uh, I think the stepping stone for doing that is the Gitforge. Because currently a lot of the stuff that we have is basically duct tape around Pagure, Bodhi, Bugzilla, and other points, which is duct taping everything together, which is okay, it's, it worked. But nowadays we have better solutions to work on that. We, can, we, we might be able to replace some of the duct tape with, some, with something that the Gitforge will provide. So I hope we will get into a simpler infrastructure in few releases. The question is, what, uh, that, what is the skill set that person or experience that the person should have to join? This is a tough question because, as, as mentioned by Adam, like, there are parts of the projects that require very, very little. You need to have some Python experience, for example. You need to be able to read a little, little bit of code and you can contribute. Some others, even, is just contributing documentation. It doesn't require, so it, it varies. And the best place, how to judge what you are good at or what you can help with is to contact us. Contact us in the matrix channels in federal infrastructure or federalist engineering. Contact us in the, discor in, the, in the discourse thread with, hey, my name is so-and-so and I can write Python or my name is so-and-so and I can deploy Linux systems. What can I, how can I help you? So that's probably the best place to start. Amazing question. So what is the uh, starting point for people? Is that the question, right? Is if there is some uh, easy starting point for, for a new person coming into the federal infrastructure? Not right now, but it is part of the work I'm doing. And we are making a good first issue uh, list that, that, that I will pr produce in a couple of weeks, which will, inter which will include a, a project across our infrastructure and at least one or two tickets in each of the trackers will be marked as a uh, good starter issue or good, new, good first issue for, for people who want to come in and, and join us. And I'm being said that we have the last five minutes, so do you have any questions? Yeah, David? Can you read the loud bit? Do we have like a syllabus in mind when like if a new contributor rocks up, they see an, a good first ticket? And can we, when we're creating these, can we do something like say somebody that completes this ticket has the opportunity to learn X, Y, Z? Mm -hmm. and by the so time they're, they're actually going to achieve something. Mm -hmm. So the question is if we if we have uh, some sort some sort of uh, achievement. Uh, what people will achieve by working on our uh, tickets. It's, is that correct? Uh, no, and I didn't even think about it, to be honest. And it's actually, it's a really good, it's a really good point. It's a really good point to su summarize in the tickets what, what people will learn from it. So thank you, that's a, that's a good one. So if there are no other questions, I will leave you with one quote, which I learned recently, which is kind of part of the, par, part of the idea that I have about this, and that's not to prioritize what's on the schedule, but to schedule our priorities, and that's what we need to do. I think we need to do in federal infrastructure and in federal in general. Thank you very much for your attention.
Thank you very much, Tomas Urczka, for a great presentation. Looks like we have a tiny break before the next set of uh, presentations here. So feel free to roam about the expo room. Thanks. <laughs>